Alright, hello everybody, and welcome to the second part of the Logic Pro 9 Beginners tutorial in electronic music and using Logic in general. Um, as I spoke to you in the last tutorial, I was telling you about screen sets, and I want to continue talking about that because I wasn't clear, and also about using loops again still, and we're going to talk about other things soon. Anyway, I just want to show you what the power of Apple Loops is and also what you can do with it. So. I have a song over here that I was working on. It's called Manhattan Dub. It's like a dubby track. Um, just let's take a listen for a second. Anyway, it's just a dubby track, right? And I was looking for a lead sound. Um, and I just couldn't find anything that I really liked. And I was going through these loops over here. So I got across to one of these and things didn't take that. Anyways, so I took a loop. I took a green loop, right? We spoke about green loops before. Our um, MIDI files, and you're able to edit them. You know, audio you can edit it, but like not really. I'm saying MIDI, I was able to change all the notes. So I just, I just dragged one in here, and I found this riff that I like, and I played around with it. And I just kept on recording and messing around with it. I mean, I recorded a new sound because it gave me a sound that I liked. It gave me a sound that I really, really liked. And I was able to find it. So that's what you can do with loops. Let's just hear it. So, you know, sometimes, you know, you're not, you shouldn't be embarrassed or anything to, like, use a loop to give you an idea. You know, if you, you know, if you're just going to make a whole entire song loop, out of like Apple loops, it's obviously not going to sound original, but you know, if a loop gives you an idea or it's been helping you along with something else, then you should definitely use them. Anyway, so that's what I want to discuss with loops again. Fine, now we're back to screen sets, right? So, screen sets imagine you know, you're sitting down, you're producing one day, and um, you know, you want to be able to get to your, your main things that you use when you produce are your arrange window, your mixer, your sample editor which is when you have an audio loop, you drag it in there to cut it up or to reverse it or different things, camera roll, um, you know, and they're all here at the bottom, but the thing is that they're small. And if you have a small screen, like I do actually, um, or even if you have a big screen, you just want to be able to have more control and, you know, edit well. So we have a thing called screen sets, right? Screen sets up there in the windows. So if you press on one screen set, it goes to screen set one, which is the arrange window. If you press on two, Right now it's not set, it's also going to go to a range window. So we want to make screen set 2, or if you go to screen set 3, or if you go to screen set whatever, right? So it's all so it's all these different types of things, right? And we don't want to get confused. Um, let's just hold on, let me just close that project in the back. We're not going to save it. Fine. Right now we're at screen set 3, we want to be at screen set 1, right? So let's say we want to make screen set 2. Our mixer, right? So we press two on a screen set two. We go to window. See over here, if you, have, if you click on window, it shows you arrange, mixer, all these things. You don't want to have to keep on clicking that to go to all these things. So you have to learn the commands. Commands are very important. So we said we want to make screen set two the mixer. So you would press now, you would just press command two. The mixer opens up. You drag it down a bit, X out the arrange window in the back, plus this window to the full size, press lock. Now you switch from one to two, and that's it. Now you have your mixer on screen set two. Screen set screen set three. We want to make um, hmm, what do we want to make it? We want to make it the piano roll. Piano roll command is command six. Um, so we have that. Remember X out the background again. Bring it up, and now you have screen set three lock. So one is a range window. Two is there, and three is the piano roll. And that's awesome. So now you're able to like do, you know, you're, you're able to move quickly. Fine. Now, let us discuss um, some more about loops and some more about editing in the thing. So let's just take a loop again, just something that we are going to find. Um, you know, let's start with some drums, just a basic drum beat for what we need. Let's lower down this tempo just so that we'll be able to see what we're doing. 99. Let's take that. Right. We have a southern drum beat coming up, right? This is basics again. 
Delete that. We're going to loop this to the four bars, right? So now we want to take a piano, right? to show you. Let's say, let's say you like this riff, you know? You like this riff. Alright, let's play it together and see how it sounds. Alright, so it's a very, very basic riff. You've heard it like a billion times. Alright, but you don't like, you don't like the last three chords. You see it's going from one, two, three, four different chords. We'll discuss chords also. Um, but you only like this first part, right? So what would you do? How would you get that out of there? So you go over here. This is your toolbox. These two little guys are your toolbox. This is your primary tool, which is your left click or any click, whatever, on your trackpad. And this one is, actually that says whatever. Um, this you would be able to get to. This is called your secondary tool box thingy you'll be able to get to it by control. So let's just leave that. Let's let's put that on nothing for now. Um, so if you want to just get this part, you would take out your scissor tool. Your scissor tool, and you'd zoom in and see where the MIDI notes end, and we would go like that, right? And now we would divide it, right? Now we click back on this, take this thing, and press delete. Now, you, now you're left with just the part that you wanted. Now you can loop that part I mean, this isn't the best example because it's just one chord and it's probably not going to sound great, but I'm just saying you're, you're like able to cut it. Fine. Boom. That's with MIDI loops. Let's take a... Let's go to a guitar. Let's take a guitar loop somewhere. Take a guitar somewhere. have this audio loop also, right? And let's play it. I mean this one is not such a great example either, but you can also do the same exact thing. You can just cut it where you want it to cut it, right? And now we can delete that guy. And now you can play around with this loop and make him go crazy like that. Then go If you really want to be fun, we're going to discuss convert loops real copies. You can just delete one there, and one there, and one there, and one there, and one over there, and now we'll have an interesting sound. So there's ways to play around with these things, and um, it's good to know about, right? So now, let's say, um, okay. You bring in this loop, right? And you like the loop. You double click on it, it's going to open up into this sample editor where you'll be able to see things and you know you can do bigger um, editing things if you want to cut out a certain sound or something like that. You're able to do things like that. So let's see audio file, um, you have edit, you have functions. Right? The thing is, nothing is selected right now. If you press Command A, right? Functions. See, the thing is that doesn't let you like Apple doesn't really let you switch up um, their loops, like reversing them for some reason, unless they're in a different format, which is very interesting. I don't know why they do that, but anyway, what you can do is is you can right click on here, and you can go bounce in place. Right? You bounce in place, and it becomes like a BIP file or something. And you make a new track, the destination will have to be a new track, and you delete the first one we have. Right? We delete that. Right? Now we have this guy. You press Command A to select this whole thing, and you're able to now reverse him. Right? Let's see how that would sound reversed. <laughs> Sounds like Jimi Hendrix. Um, settings. There's a lot of complicated stuff in Logic that I still 
like don't even really know, but we can do a fade in. Um, what does that do? Fades in the volume. You know, so there's different things that you can play around with and um, things like that, right? So let's start going through, um, let's start figuring out what, you know, how much time did we do on this tutorial already? Alright, we can do another like two minutes or something like that. Um, so let's talk about recording, right? How are we doing that, right? We discussed that in the last tutorial, I think, also, is that when you play a software instrument, right? So if you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you can hit the caps lock key. This little guy comes up over here. And um, just a note about this guy. So you see, these are the black keys. These guys are dotted out like that. And these are, and these are the white keys on a keyboard, right? A, C, C, they make it look like a little keyboard, which is kind of cool. Right now we're just using it for drums. But um, these numbers on top are the octaves, right? So right now we're on octave two. If you press three, now if you press six, you go to octave three. New sounds will come up. Uh, this isn't the best thing to show you how an octave works. Let me show you something else. Just in, uh, let's go to the electric piano. Um, see, octave higher, octave lower. So we have a basic piano here, right? Playing a C chord. Remember at the bottom over here, um, we spoke about. Um, that logic tells you which note you're playing. But, so we know that, right? So now, just basics on the EVP88. It's a electric piano synth, right? And there's all these things. If you press open, you can go like that, right? Um, you can change it to there. You can see how many voices there are in it. different things that's just special for that but I'm saying just the basics of of, of like this synth is just like the EQ um, you know, if you don't have treble you don't have any bite you know if you don't have any bass nothing it's just gonna sound bad you know it's just that you know just basics of the synth is just EQ and distortion and you know a little bit of chorus if you want to add it in. We don't want to keep it detuned, we want to make it normal, we want to make it this. Fine, let's just bring it back to a normal. Alright, so, um, let's, so now I want to show you how to record, right? And so you want to record yourself playing a C chord. Right, which is you see, you see me hitting those things. That's there. Uh, you know what? We're just gonna switch this up for a second because I, mean, I just I mess up some of the settings and I'm not really that in the mood of changing around right now. We'll just do this. Right, right? this is just a clap. Um, uh, the what is this? This is a EBD six is a what's it called? Um. It's a clav. It's a clav is scored. No, what? It's a clav. I don't even know. Um. Anyway, so we have this little thing over there like that. And um, if you want to record on Logic, it's very simple. All you gotta do is press record. And what's gonna happen is at the top here is gonna turn red. Like I just, you just might have seen for a second. And um, it's going to count you in four beats. A metronome, click track, that's basically using all studios today. And everybody uses it in their productions that they can record and, you know, keep everything in time properly. Um, you can, you know, change the metronome settings if you don't want it to play while you record or only while you record in. You know, click while only during the count into the actual recording and change it around. So if I just want to play, you know, just get that onto the thing. And I don't want to type it into my panel, I'll just press record.
now I have this riff, you know, going up there. And now it's on my piano roll. I can see it in my piano roll over there. Uh, if we, uh, well, that's because that's on. We go to screen set three, it's even bigger. We can, we can edit it, you know, you can go up and down like that. Piano roll. I don't want to do so that's basics of what the recording is about and um, in the next tutorial we're going to start building up a track from scratch and uh, I'm going to start showing you techniques on what to do and uh, we're going to start learning about mixing we're going to start learning about everything we're just going to I'm just going to be jumping around I don't really have a plan um, it's just we're just going to go we're going to learn about synths and what they do and the sounds and editing and all of these things over there what they do and um, thank you for watching. I'm still not sure if it's a clavis chord. I don't even know what the heck I was talking about.